And after this class, we're going to have a, a recollection of what it's been like at Fullerton Velocity Department, I mean, uh, the Long Beach Velocity Department. Uh, our colleague, oh yeah, he's prepared to give a, an analysis of the philosophers of Long Beach State. Which ones to avoid, why? <laughs> the state of philosophy in Long Beach. <laughs> Right? You probably have done such a great job when I done the test. See, he said Forget yes. Forget them all. <laughs> we left off at three, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Or was it four? Mm -hmm. We finished three, we were into four, right? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Do you recollect of the same? Yeah, that's right. That's right. But there is yet another way to this knowledge, is that? of the intelligence may also be seen in this. We, mar is it there? we marvel at the magnitude and beauty of the sense world, the eternal regularity of its movement, the divinity, visible and invisible, that it contains, its diamonds, animals, plants. <laughs> Let us then rise to the model of the higher reality from which this world derives. And let us there contemplate the whole array of intelligibles that possess eternally an inalienable intelligence and life. Over them presides. Can you read that last part? Okay. Let us. Okay. Let us then rise to the model, to the higher reality from which this world derives, <coughs> and let us there contemplate the whole array of intelligibles that possess eternally an inalienable intelligence and in life. Over them resides pure intelligence, unapproachable wisdom. That world is the true realm of Kronos, whose very name suggests both abundance, Koros, and intelligence, Nous. There is, there is contained all that is immortal, <coughs> intelligent, divine. There is the place of every soul. There is eternal rest. Since it is in a state of bliss, why should the intelligence seek change? Since it contains everything, why should it aspire to anything? Since it is perfect, what need has it of has it of development. All its content is perfect too, so that it is perfect throughout. It contains nothing that is not of the nature of thought. Of thought, however, that is not a search but possession. Its happiness does not depend upon something else. It is eternally all things in that eternity of which time, which abandons one moment for the next, is only a fleeting image upon the level of the soul. The soul's action is successive, divided by the various objects that draw its attention. Now Socrates, now a horse, always some particular. 
The intelligence, however, embraces all, possesses all in unchanging identity. It is alone. And it always has this character of presentness. Future, it has not. Already, it is all it could ever later become. Past, it has not. No intelligible entity ever passes away. All it contains exist in, a, in an eternal present because they remain identical with themselves. Contented, you might say, with their present condition. Singly, they are both intelligence and being. Together, they form the totality of intelligence and the totality of being. The intelligence gives existence to being in thinking it. Being, by being object of thought, gives the intelligence its thinking and its existence. Which comes first? Hmm. It's got to be the object of thought. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, this thought, thought, and being are the same here. I mean, they're not, mm -hmm. they're not separated. No. <laughs> no. Although the intelligence gives existence to being and thinking it. Yet, right. yet, <laughs> being, being the object of thought, it, I don't know. Gives intelligence its thinking, it makes existence. <coughs> so, what is the thinking? One can't be before the other, have to be simultaneous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> It's thinking and its existence. Yeah. One it's so they're to intelligence or thinking. Interdependent. Mm -hmm. I want to do that for you now. Okay. The intelligence gives existence to being in thinking it. Being, by being object of thought, gives to the intelligence its thinking and its existence. But there must still exist something else that makes the intelligence think and being be, their common cause. It is true that the intelligence and being exist simultaneously and together and never, never part. Yes. <laughs> but their oneness which is simultaneously intelligence and being, thinking and object of thought, is twofold. The intelligence, inasmuch as it thinks, and being, inasmuch as it is the object of thought. Oh, the intelligence is cold. Inasmuch as it thinks, and being, inasmuch as it is the object of thought. Intellection implies difference as well as identity. Therefore, the primary terms are intelligence, being, identity, difference. And to them must be added movement and rest. Movement is implied in the intellective activity of the intelligible realm. Rest in its sameness. Difference is ex implicit in the distinction between the thinker and the thought because without difference they are reduced to unity and to silence. The objects of thought also require difference in order to be distinguished from one another. Identity is implied in the self-sufficient unity of the intelligence and in the nature shared in common by all intelligible beings, quite as difference is implied in their being distinguishable. From this multiplicity of these terms comes number and quantity. While the proper character of each of them is quality, while the proper quality of each of them is quality. From these terms, as from originating principles, everything else proceeds.
we have our other readers. To rest there. Yeah, I didn't see, I was following the reports and I didn't really see any differences any, any major differences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I wasn't reading with Karen. <laughs> it has happy here instead of present in the Armstrong, I noticed. But it thinks not by seeing, but by having. Uh, aching. Acorn, I think it is. Acorn. And it's not by seeing, it's by investigation, I think, isn't it? Seeking. Seeking, yeah. Investigate, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this, the uh, Armstrong pick up happening. <sighs> now, let's see what McKenna did. Look for the other one. That twin term, in intelligence hyphen being is, uh, is a key. Yeah. 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 <coughs> McKenna here, intellectual principle by its intellective act establishes being, which in turn as the object mm -hmm. of intellection mm -hmm. becomes the cause of intellectual of intellection and of existence to the intellectual principle. Mm -hmm. That's different. Mm -hmm. By thinking. By thinking. It's thinking and its existence. Mm -hmm. Shift in the Greek goes from to one and to not on that latter term. But grammatical I don't know if that's just required grammatical. How's the love read? I read. That's how long. But each of them is intellect and being, and the whole is universal intellect and being. Intellect making being exist in thinking in and being giving intellect, thinking, and existence by being thought. No future in the intelligence. <laughs> There's no past. <laughs> no future. No future. No future. Can't go anywhere with no it. No future in the intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> Doesn't even have much of a past. Not even on the start. <laughs> Never was anything. Yeah, you, no future no in futures. it. Yeah. No future. Couldn't even trade it on a commodities market. <laughs> Back and forth, isn't it? 
this intellective principle, which has a what we call a thought. function, right? And when it and in its function yields being. Yeah, it has to. It has to encounter what's true or real. Right? This is its object. Mm -hmm. And therefore it works backwards simultaneously. Right. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's just right. one system. way or the other. Mm -hmm. Right. Try try our boy, O'Brien. Um that one description? The intelligence gives existence to being and like that thing. So it gives existence, right? It gives existence. Right. Gives it. Mm -hmm. right. Go ahead. And thinking it. And thinking it. And being, by being the object of thought, gives to the intelligence its thinking and its existence. Mm -hmm. That gives it thinking and its existence. Good to see. And you can't yeah. think mm -hmm. of something that can't it's be thought. thought. That's more like Pierre's version. Mm -hmm. This diagram looks more like the version you read. Cause it, it causes its thinking rather than causes than um, yeah. um, Keep them separate. This is the term used here is establishes. Right, this is uh, this is personalisticism. O'Brien is personalistic, mm -hmm. isn't it? Right. Anthropomorphic in that sense. Personalistic. Mm -hmm. Right. Intelligence. It gives. Right. It gives existence. Mm -hmm. In thinking it. Right. That's quite interesting. Low below. But each of them is intellect and being. And the whole is universal intellect and being. Intellect, making being, exist in thinking it. Making being, making in thinking it. Right. Establishes, making, gives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead. And mm -hmm. being, giving intellect, thinking, and existence by being thought. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. Very Same tight thing. between O'Brien and, mm -hmm. yeah, and Lowe. Yeah. You can't think of something that isn't, yeah. right? And that <coughs> if you're not thought of, then you're not. You aren't. Mm -hmm. So it's very. You really have to. They're right together. You can't have one without the other. Yeah. <coughs> How, how would it be? Just the intellective principle, period. Thinking? Hmm? Thinking? Just before it thinks. The intellective principle right before it thinks. Yeah. How would you call it? Would it be a principle then? Huh? Good. I don't know. What's the end of that? Did I hear you say, I don't know? Yeah, you heard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that would be the definition. Why, why would it deserve the name intellect if it didn't yeah. think? The intellective principle, the definition would be thinking. You know, that has to be in there. <laughs> then it is its function. Or do I like to show them off. It's into languages, so I like to do 
Yeah, huh? <laughs> Chairman. For mm -hmm. you guys. I see a similar problem um, in like, that he talks about in self knowing on page 85. Mm -hmm. That uh, involves the same kind of thing, the self being known. Right. Right, that's that's right. Okay. And um, that's how he tries to put one in the other, you know, kind of problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think that would be somewhere. Right? What, uh, what, what sector is that? What number is that? knowing hypothesis. Just page 85 of the low. Oh, it isn't what? in that. That's jump. Yeah, yeah, it isn't in all the text. It's only in the canon low. Oh, it's a particular. It's not the primal, yeah. primal hypothesis. No. Okay. Then. Yeah. All right. But anyway, that's. We'll get there. Then. It's it's must have a model. It's yeah. a good problem. It'd be really. You know, it's curious the term that we're translating variously. Establishing or giving mm -hmm. existence to is a term ufistemi. Which is? Ufistemi. Ufistemi sounds like it. Yeah, go ahead. means to set stand with yeah. upo, and then it comes together with ufistemi. Oh, upo, yeah. Ufistemi. Okay. Like ufistemi. Okay. Okay. And yeah. has the meaning of to place or set under, and it can mean metaphorically as in supporting a house, um, as a foundation. Having, having set something up as a foundation. And it's so I find it kind of a strange term because of the parallelism of the intelligence and being. You know, there's kind of a sense in which there seems to be a reci reciprocity. And yet it, intelligence is like, it's, um, and it establishes the root meaning of this thing. Mean. So they're not translating all the upo part, which means under or from under. Yeah. Later terms, giving, are, is the term. The being gives to to the uh, intelligence. So that's a giving. This is a this is something else. So this is the, the what the need here is the word uh, necessary condition. Yeah, it's got to be on some kind of level like that because it's simultaneously present, both. Right. Or wouldn't Eternally, be. Eternally, simultaneously yeah. present. Like, you, you can't... Can't have any can't piece have of it. You can't have the intellect of act without it... At the, in, the, in the very intellect of act, rest out in being. I'm going to take the word rest out. Establishing being. Um, giving it, giving it existence. If there is intellective acts, it, because of the fact that there's intellective act, there has to be an object, and the object has to be real. So the act and the object are together. Yeah, but it, if it was real, it wouldn't be real unless it was thought of. But it would have to be real if it was thought of. Right? Yeah. Thought, to me, has too much amplification. Oh, okay. All right. Quality, right? Yeah, I see what you mean here. But so long as you use the idea of thought the way we were doing it last week, the last time, of thought and the intelligence. Yeah, yeah that's right. Oh. <coughs> it's not the same thing as the thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the uh, intellective principle, uh, the intellective principle functions, functions. It's a, it's a, a, a you're saying it's a necessary condition, huh? Well, I'm trying to go really for a logical connection. Well, like how about like a biconditional? That's right. It is biconditional. It's bi. It's biconditional. If and only if, right? Yeah, it, is. it is biconditional. If a only if b. Yeah. If b only if a. Now, how can I use the word like understands? Right? Like establishes. It, it's its underpinning. It's as foundational as the sense that you're, you're moving. Directly. It's ground. What? 
It's ground. It's ground. That, that's good. I take that. The intellectual principle functions in its functioning. Uh, is grounded in being. See that grounded, that takes it to the form of yeah. the ground. Yeah. yeah, I can see why there's a difficulty in finding the word for it. Okay, all right. The, found, the necessary foundation of the intellectual act presupposes an, an encounter with the real. Presupposes an encounter with the real. Not like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Just this great quote I found back here in three, talking about the soul, when it looks into intellect, what is this? It has within it, and as its own, what it thinks in its active actuality. These questions that he asks, you know, at the beginning of each, there was, the one that got me there is maybe he answered it. He doesn't seem to answer the questions. Are they just, or at least I didn't see that he answered it. Uh, maybe uh, the one I saw was, which is excellent questions, you know, I love his question. You know, um, the one about, since it is in a state of bliss, why should the intelligence seek change? Since it contains everything, why should it aspire to anything? Since it is perfect, what need has it is of development? All its content is perfect. Two, so that it is perfect throughout. It contains nothing that is not of, uh, not of the nature of thought. Yet there seems to be some some change. Where? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I want to encourage you. God. Where? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah. Uh, why don't you keep reading, please? It's an exception. Yes, skip, you can skip the moment. Its happiness is dependent on something else. It is eternally all things in that eternity of which time, which abandons one moment for the next, is only a fleeting image upon the level of the soul. The soul's action is successive, divided by the various objects that draw its attention. The intelligence, however, embraces all, possesses all in, in unchanging identity. It is alone. And it always has this character of presentness. Future it has not. Already it is all it could ever later become. Past it is not. No intelligible entity ever passes away. All it contains exists in an eternal present because they remain identical with themselves, contented, you might say, with this present condition. <coughs> Singly, they are both intelligence and being. Yeah, say it again. Singly, they are both intelligence and being. Now all he's going to do is unpack that. This is second hypothesis, right? <coughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you put in the terms since we got intelligence and being and not one in being? How would you uh, put those in? Oh, I think 
he's doing it right there. Uh, well, I think that was very confusing in the second hypothesis for me, how that all went on right there. Remember when we drew the picture with the, the line and the two yeah. dots? Yeah. Oh. And that part right there was there, very confusing. There, that's where it is. That's right there. Right. Yeah. That's the point you're asking. Right there. That's the point. Because we had, if you, he said, if you take a one, you know, an exists. idea of a one, or one that, that exists. Part, yeah, one that exists. That part right there, boy, I've puzzled over that. Yeah, just stay, in, stay where we are. Keep, keep bringing it down to the center. Singly are both intelligence and being. Together they form the totality of intelligence and the totality of being. Hmm. Good. Intelligence gives existence to <coughs> being and thinking it. Being by being option, object of thought gives to the intelligence its thinking and its existence. Right. Like here he's got... Singly. Right. That's when we you can take it this way. If we take it this way, if we understand it this way, then we have something, right? We have something that's doing something, right? That's within itself. Mm -hmm. And it's doing something, right? and in, in its doing that, it establishes being. Going the other way, being gives existence to the intellectual principle. And gives it, and uh, mm -hmm. is nothing other than its own act. That's strong name for many at the moment. And I mean, uh, see, you, as long as you go along with this and say. If there is this thing, it cannot not do this. And if it does that, it's impossible for it not to, to act other than genuinely, and therefore there has to be an object. And the object has to be real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be real. It's intellectual. Otherwise it would be an intellectual. Or it could, intellectual. Or it could be an intellective act. Right. It would be some... So contained within itself is, is, its, is the real. But the real, taking the real as a whole now, <laughs> you can work it backwards now, can't you? Oh, I see. Right. The real so necessarily. There are two aspects of, of one thing. They're both real. Yes, they're both real, but I say one is really real. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> really? That's the object. <laughs> oh. Two mm -hmm. mutually inclusive realities. Could you hear that? Is it, would that be two mutual, mutually inclusive realities? <coughs> the way they could be one. It's one many. Yeah, if you read down there. One. Read down. Well, it's one mini. It's not one. <laughs> yeah. How many realities? Have you got the McKenna Paul? Well, that's it's intelligence. I mean, the old It's distinct. It's a distinction. is more mm -hmm. than one. It's two. Mm -hmm. But if they're not separate, it's still distinct. But still, a distinction implies some some difference, <laughs> doesn't? It? Some dissimilarity or what? But I mean, would you say it's two realities? Here's a. Doesn't. Distinctions. The problem with. Of distinction and difference. Mm -hmm. You can make distinctions without finding any difference. But there's something in which you base the distinction. Mm -hmm. It's still a distinction. It's not. It's not nothing. It's something. Yeah. This is the top. This is the bottom. That's a distinction. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. It's the same, same thing. Like I can say. Pen and not pen, that's a difference. Mm -hmm. And a distinction. But I can make a distinction without a difference. Mm. 
What could you say? Pen and crayon? Isn't that's that's a difference. A difference. That's well, the eye is different from the toe. It's still but it's not different from yourself. Oh. Pardon? Um, I'm saying the eye, one's eye is different from one's toe, but they're not different from oneself. I hope so. But they're not the same. Well, they oh. are the same. Same person. I don't know. I'll read the little doubt about them. Come on. You left out too quick. But if they're inseparable, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, are they in, are they separable? They're distinct. Well, no, he distinct. seems to be they're saying that they're not inseparable. They're simultaneously always together, eternally. Mm -hmm. right. So all I was saying and is, is that two they, realities right. or is that one reality? And he says, but their oneness it's a one many. is twofold. <laughs> their oneness is twofold. Right. Yeah. And doesn't each... Each part I can see there's the a twofold reality, reality, but to say mm -hmm. there's two well, it's a twofold one, and it's a yeah. one that it's a two. Okay. It's a <laughs> yeah, I can go on with that, but to say <laughs> it's a one that's a two, and it's a two that's a one, they can't <laughs> exist independently. And since there are two aspects of one thing, that's three. Right, that's right. That's right. And then you can go on to six <laughs> because there's difference in sameness and keep going, you know. We're all the way up to six when you get through with four. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, see, now you have to go back to the question you raised, Bill. Yeah. So he raises questions, you know, and see that he's answered them. Yeah, but I'm through it now. Why should the intelligence seek change? Well, it doesn't seek change. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't change. It already is. It won't be any more or less. It's not in the past that it wouldn't be gone. It's not in the future. <clears throat> so we can't look here for change. Well, or at least what we call change. Well, as long as we can go on, huh? <coughs> okay. Okay. Ron, what do you must change is it okay. somehow a copy of realization. Oh, yeah, it's gonna have to be a copy. It's gonna have to be somewhere else. Copy of real not realization, here. you know, as emotion. Okay. Well he even emotion. talks about the soul in time, so. That's true. Where is that? Only a fleeting image upon the level of the soul. The soul's action is successive, divided by the various objects that draw its attention. Now, Socrates, now a horse, always something particular. The intelligence, however, embraces all, possesses all, and the unchanging identity. I mean, if you're complete and whole and perfect, and there isn't any reason to change. Astonishing, you know, uh, is that he's saying that what we've just described is the archetype of the visible universe. What? The model. The model. Mm -hmm. play with models? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Oh, good. She has experience with models. Mm. And this is about a model. Like mm. Mm -hmm. Right? We could put a couple of questions to her. And she has this experience with models. Oh, it might help. Should there be some relationship between the model and the yes. copy? Should there? <coughs> well, 
Well, what we're just describing is the model of this universe. Mm -hmm. And of your pen as well. <laughs> <laughs> But would you say that it's obvious to everyone and just that I'm somewhat slow at times and dull? If I were to raise the point and ask your help in showing how this can how can this possibly be considered as a model for this universe as you know? Um <laughs> I don't know that I'll, let's just ask that. <laughs> like we did have some fun with this stuff on the board. Oh. What has that got to do with the universe? Well, with the pastrami mm -hmm. sandwich in Brooklyn. Right. Right? Or the mm -hmm. history of China. Or Age of Pericles, or mm -hmm. etc. Right? Good question. Mm -hmm. Sickness and hell. <laughs> Discursive thought. And dissymmetry and symmetry. Actually has nothing to do with it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's right. Oh, that's right. Good. There doesn't appear to be any points of similarity. Not if you're gonna, you know, not unless you stop thinking about your pen and it disappears. Or, I don't know. So someone was going to argue that what we're reading represents the archetype for this universe of ours. You would find that a strange proposition, you know? Yes. And what kinds of questions then would you ask about it? Well, How can that which is so different possibly be an archetype or something? Yeah, what which is? Which possesses what it? <laughs> what Gigantic I Gigantic differences, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And it looks like they could have gotten a little closer. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. just a little bit. <laughs> okay, as long as we all we're together, then we can go on. Right? Oh, okay. Well, only doesn't, I, isn't Ruth going to answer the question? I mean, she had this model theory. My question is, what is this model of? Oh, if we have a model copy, and if what was talking about it before, intelligence being, is the mo model, then why isn't the copy a lot closer? Or is it? Well, now, at the beginning of 4, it talks about the model. <clears throat> Greatness of the intelligence may also be seen in this. We marvel at the magnitude and beauty of the sense world, the eternal regularity of its movement, the divinities, visible and invisible, that it contains. Its diamonds, animals, plants. Let us then rise to the model to the higher reality from which this world derives. I'll tell you what, look okay. here. Suppose, suppose we remember that. Uh, I'll tell you what would be fun to do. There's this stuff is. coming and going all the time. If we can, if we can, There's a if we can construct, model. So if we can yeah. construct a, uh, a model of the archetype, Problem of your speech and your thoughts. If we can do those, mm. what? What? It's the problem of your speech and your thought. He you said. Problem of confidence. How are your words reflecting that insight? Mm. That is a model to a call. Yeah. The we're going to string fellow bar has that great expression called symbolic distance. And that's essentially what you were saying a moment ago, though. You were saying mm -hmm. you had wished that the, the, the difference between the model and the copy were, were not as great right. mm -hmm. as it appears to be. Mm -hmm. right? So Rod was saying, you just have the same problem with, in, in speech, between speech and thought, that mm -hmm. precedes, precedes speech as a thought. Right? Mm -hmm. and that can be said to be its parent. But there is a closer relationship, a closer distance, symbolic distance, between these two and what we're having. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, right. Well, let me see. I'm, I'm going to ask another question. Now. Uh, this question is not mine. It was originally raised on a Thursday evening by Thinsky. Good old Thinsky. Mm -hmm. Must have been a long time ago. Thursday evenings? Mm. All right. This is Thinsky's proposition. For this to be true, Number. we should. 13. Oh. For this to be true, so for this to be true, we must find some way in which the author can reveal how he, why he thinks this is the case. Sure. Right? We Not, can't, I can't figure it out. He better. He's the one putting right? it forth. That is to say, he's got this, he's got model, he's got, let's use archetype language. He uses that, that's here. Yeah. We marvel at the magnitude and beauty of this instrument. Right. Yeah. Let us then rise to the model. That's our catupon. <laughs> Okay. Arca yeah. There we are. Arca oh, interesting. That's good. <laughs> All right. He goes, Arca icon use so often. Yeah, it's icon. It's an yeah. icon. Uh, and a copy. We're going to get a description of this. We're getting it. All right. We're going to get more of it. We're familiar with this. We want to know, how did Plotinus make the connection between the two? How did he make that connection? Yeah. Because I assure you, as you, as you undoubtedly know in any case, but I assure you that that connection is not obvious. There are many traditions that have this and have this and they don't have that. It's like that they're floating separately, you know, mm -hmm. somehow. <laughs> well, they can call this divine, they can all call this God, mm -hmm. right. without, without ever speaking of it as an archetype for this universe. Oh, yeah. And in fact, and that's what I never want to lead you to believe that that's there's right. any kind. What leads Plotinus to make that connection? Because that's real. Yeah. The only yeah. thing I ever hung on to in my religious upbringing was somehow they they uh, <clears throat> made the mistake of reading that little part that said, "And God made man in His own image." And I kind of hung on to that, and I kept questioning them about that, and they didn't care too much for that. Because I kept saying, what image? How? Uh, both, both man and woman, he made in his own image. Yeah. Therefore, it's a God is an animal. What? Hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite, yeah. That's right. Okay. Our dual, right? Dual. Mm -hmm. So he was really into mm -hmm. Plotinus all the time. Yeah. Hmm. But boy, they don't but like to see, about it. You see, you, you can. He also is a participation in divinity. Yeah, right. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, I have the whole problem there. Yeah, that's right. Right. But in Christianity, it's it, you can't get this statement. No, there's a gap between there. There's no. Yeah. And it's being asserted. It's being asserted that God is 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 the image of that. But no one would say, therefore, God is the archetype of our universe. The closest they could come is to say that God, in His image provides the icon or the archetype for man and women, the human species. Yes. All right, so we get a hunk of it there. Mm -hmm. Right. But this is the whole universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Chinese, they have this, do you have something about this? The Chinese, the Chinese have this, uh, the... Oh, there's a mother for 10,000 things. Yes, it is. This is Chinese. They have the archetype. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's the mother of 10,000 things. The Tao is the mother of 10,000 things. Mother, mother for all. Source. Mm -hmm. The Hindus don't. I don't see if the Hindus have it. They have it as a, like in the 11th chapter in the Gita, the great vision, divine vision of uh, Arjuna. He gets a double vision. Right? He gets a clear light and then he gets uh, Ishvara. The, Time, a vision of time and all of its intensity. And, but nowhere do they say that the one is the model for the other. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's a big Hindu mystery. 
Right. This like is intelligence, right. intelligence being as a model for soul or for the universe is that? Well, it, I, I don't know about that, but in the Hindu world, this is an 11th book on the top. The 10,000 suns image. Then, then this unfolds, right? Our universe unfolding when it unfolds from beginning to end, uh, in, in folds in time, that's called Ishvara, or time. Mm. Mm -hmm. But nowhere does it say that this, this original experience of life, the interior life, is the model or the archetype for time, mm -hmm. mm. and the unfoldment of time. Mm -hmm. But Titus is coming along and saying, hey, I got news for you. All these two, one stands for the other as a archetype. Man, we're gonna say, okay, Jack, <laughs> show us. Yeah. Right? How do you? Yeah. How do you? Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? Or like? Let's see it. <laughs> here's something that's constantly changing, and but you're I'll, saying I'll, that it's I, I, I know the right copy of something that doesn't change. Know, it's Barbara, completely um, present. Run out and get us two or three of these, will you? Sure. You want the larger kind? Yeah, large, medium, and small. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, you go with her. Maybe too much. All right, you go with her. Yeah. Now, what it's kinds of questions can we put to these subjects who have had these states of mind to determine whether or not we could come to the to that statement? Oh, hey, by the way, one is the archetype for the other. All right. All right, yeah, it's a, it's it's even a problem. It's it's it even has built in at the problem of that not only is it the archetype, but it's also um, that by which the the copy comes about. Yeah, right. it's a generator. Yeah. A generator yeah. and oh, what model. Oh, yeah. that's the model. And within it, all right, two aspects, yeah. six terms. That you don't find anywhere. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't find the numbers so. one through six. Yeah, you don't get you don't get that anymore. Okay. Yeah, probably number comes out. So, so we need a couple of so so who would you recommend as watchers for this problem? Rod, what do you, which would you recommend? Archetype watchers or <laughs> causal uh, um, uh what do we call it? Archetypal what watchers. What do you want to call that uh, that problem? Finsky's third fin this is Finsky's thirteen problem. Finsky's thirteen problem. Watchers. Yeah. The thinker, the They're thinker. called archetypal watchers. A W is they called. <laughs> and so Alan Watts came along, and we discovered his middle net initial was W. Didn't didn't work. Then. A W means what? Don't look astonished. <laughs> Archetypal, <laughs> archetypal watchers. Finsky's 13th principle. Right. Well, if we need it, I'm going to be in. You'll be in AW? I'm going to be in AD. <laughs> You're going to be in AD. Duncan. Archetypal doubter. Oh, doubter. <laughs> so they're going to be those that watch it and those that doubt it. And well, you can watch. We ought to trap it. You can watch the watchers and make sure that they're seeing what they think they're seeing. Because <laughs> right. if this guy's going to pull it off, he's. We'll make sure he does it. We're not going to try to save him. Yeah. No. <clears throat> Should we go on? But in and of itself, it's a rich problem. <laughs> because here we're, okay, one's in time and one isn't. Can't, well, can't lay so that down as how, being how the, how the hell do they pull out those distinctions? <clears throat> yeah. How is time like no time, not being in time? Those distinctions, I think there's some work on that. If I were to just blab out, I think that there is a whole work on that. It's derived from personal experience. <laughs> That's going to be fun. I know. <laughs> By the way, would you say then that anyone who has such a personal experience would then come to the same conclusion? This is a question. Is yeah. I imagine you would say, yes, so yes. Yeah. 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 the point I was making here is that sure. this is only found <laughs> in the Neoplatonic tradition. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's becoming can't be a model for itself. Mm -hmm. Right? It's that being, so you presuppose it. 
guess they don't want to experience it or could label it correctly. Right. No. Well, how, how come? How can they, they had the words. How do you account for that? They didn't believe something Time. instead. If you have to believe it, then you don't have to worry, then you can right. ignore it. Just for the sake. Huh? <laughs> sake of the seat. For what? For good. <laughs> no, what I meant mean was me. that perhaps these other people <coughs> didn't come up with it because they were stuck in a certain idea uh, why does it want that prevented change? them from seeing the that. distinctions or from coming up with that model. So that Whereas to perhaps the Plotinus um, uh, wasn't obstructed with that sort okay, of thing. So this is what we want to know, all right? Here you just say. Why there's anything anyway. Here you can say, this is the way. <laughs> Me too. This is the way the problem was originally That's structured. Mm -hmm. Pinsky's thirteenth problem. All right, first. first. What is this here? Pinsky's thirteenth. This is a model of Pinsky's thirteenth problem. Oh, good. We need a right. It takes two forms, but I'll show you. <laughs> no, there wasn't any uh, the formal reason. The fishing cost was not important. Right. <laughs> well, a lot of people want to focus on the bus. That's a different kind of <laughs> Here, the guy is going along. See him? Oh, even right? He's going along. Going. Right? Bango! He gets this experience. The experience has within it, uh, as you can see, he participates in a structure. All right? Over here. All right? He has the structure before he goes into the experience. Mm. Mm, but right. Yeah. Now the question is, huh, which see is it which? Or bring it to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it already there? It's a third possibility, though. It is really a third possibility, and that's what makes this so entertaining. And that's this one, right? Well, that's going to be recollection. Mm -hmm. yeah. so how do we forget the first yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's consistent. Yeah. Comes to reason about it afterwards yeah. and sees it then. Yeah. Then he's uh, reflecting on his model to, no, to uh, then he's give him his better. Own, reflecting on his experience to, to, describe, to come up with his model. Well, then we have to have it coming from That's somewhere. Nice quote here. Yeah. So this is an arbitrary set. So he's. Um, that means things come into the soul that aren't there. Or the mind, or whatever, whatever, wherever he has that. Because um, <coughs> you see, what you really have when you have when, when you get into when you take it as a uh, an interesting game is when you have these different descriptions of these mental states, and you see the way they're described and then you see what is said about them, and that's where they diverge. Well, how do you account for that? It's all the same experience. And on one level, no one is putting it down. They're all saying it's the greatest thing going. Is it that difference between thought and speech, or that problem? Yeah, but there are, uh, is it the same problem as the difference between yeah, thought it, and speech? Yeah, they're both. But that assumes that we both agree, whatever that same problem. Okay, the, the idea that you cannot speak uh, as clearly and succinctly about the thought as the thought is.
In other words, if each one of these people had this experience and they described it, and you said they're describing it three different ways? Um, I thought the point you were making was that um, what, whatever is said, whatever is said, like as an example, um, how do you find the times, by the way? You change the subject from all. How do I find it? Yeah, how do you find the experience? Mysterious. Huh? Mysterious. You want to say more? What, in what way I come Mystical, holy, religious. Yeah. So when you said originally mysterious, mm -hmm. did it contain everything else you said later? Or did yes. you discover that as you said it? I discovered it as I said it. Well, then there, no. See, then she has it. What is it? I want to say she has a thought. Part of it came out, and then as she articulated, she discovered more consistent with it that could be said about it. Developed it. Developed from it. Unpacked mm -hmm. it. Unpacked? Yeah, come on, what kinds of terms do you need? Reflected. Yeah, okay. That's the problem I sit here in now. So more. If you it. ask me, is that the problem with this? That's what I mean by the problem. Are you asking me then, do I see that here? No, that's not the way I see it. Oh, okay. 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 I see how you see it. Okay. The way I saw it was the inability to say in words what one thought. Is the way I was seeing this other well, problem over here. But the way you described it, that's not the problem. The ability to say it in words. The, the, the way we just said it was as she as she she developed the thought, she unpacked the thought. The way I was seeing the problem between speech and thought is one is not being able to describe the thought as clearly as the thought in words. But some probably one could. Well, given the unpacking yeah. idea of relationship between speech and thought, wouldn't that fit A of that moment? Of right there, where you, you're carrying it with you and it's all packed up, and then you speak. It's like a seed. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Thought has a seed. And then it's doom. Yeah. yeah. That's not right. Exclamation point. Yeah. That's how I prefer to see everything, but. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Do you have a club? I'll join your club. How about it? Want to join our club? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Me too. How much does it cost to you? Oh, uh, not much. <laughs> a little uh, <clears throat> conversation. <laughs> Okay. Shall we push on? All right. All right. You see what we're going to. Oh, wait a minute now. Have we decided on the AWs? The Archetypal Watchers? No. Oh. no we've only got the AD. Rod said he'll be one. Okay. So that's good. All right. Barbara. Kimberly, you want a job? No, okay. Why don't you back up just to that last sentence when we get into five? Okay. <clears throat> From this multiplicity of, of these terms comes number and quantity, while the proper character of each of them is quality. From these terms, as from originating principles, everything else proceeds. There's one. AWs. Yeah, everything's going to have to proceed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I caused me to reflect because uh, like if each of these terms has existence. So we have six distinctions, mm -hmm. or six beings, six distinctions in being. Right. How did we get from being to uh, beings? By going back. Therefore, the primary terms are intelligence, being, once you grant identity, intellective yeah. principle, that and function. movement, all those six and things movement come and about. Once yeah. you have, once you have that, just that one idea, 
you get six. That intellective principle has a function, necessary function, an inseparable function from itself, a bond, yeah. a precious bond. Right. Then you get six things. Right. Right. You have to get intelligence, like being fire and light, identity, right. there, mm -hmm. movement, and rest. Movement and rest, yeah. Movement, and rest, yeah. movement is implied in intellective activity. The fact that there are several of these primaries makes number and quantity. You know, when they were, before they made number and quantity, while they were several, must there not there necessarily have been number then? Mm -hmm. I would say so. Yeah. Sure. So. Take, take fire. See, I'm right. coming from number in the section of number here. He makes it, number is proceed. Somehow he goes from toan to toanta. From being to beings and that. Mm -hmm. So I'm excuse the interruption. It's just this no. uh, question of number and what role it plays in the division of this uh, into primaries rather as a plurality. Yeah, I thought you were going to make that point clear about what is that relationship. Well, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'd like the question now. Okay. But so. look, take quickly jump for examples, or you or you may lose it. Right. Fire and light. Agree? You can't have one. Mm -hmm. One without the other. Fire mm -hmm. and light. Mm -hmm. How can you generate the six ideas? Quick, can you? Quick. Yeah. Jump quick back in the text. Come on, can you? One. Intelligence, being, identity, difference. Oh, identity. Yeah, you can generate that. Difference. We just did. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Motion. Yes. Rest. One is moving, one is at rest. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. They stand together as a knower and a known. Can you say that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Number. All right. We're making these distinctions separate one from the other. Therefore, they're numerable. Therefore, there's quantity. Mm -hmm. There's quality throughout both. But it seems like it's concomitant. It's not later. It's not, it's not a product. Simultaneous. Yes, yeah, fire is a product and it presupposes something for its existence. Yeah, and that therefore it's separate from this. But, but it's simultaneous. But it has these properties, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. so, right, you can take the same example with knowing. I missed that right. Did you say I missed the point about uh, uh, quantity? Yeah, you know, the point you just gave was, well I I thought that was the preceding point. The preceding point was the uh, since these are distinct, they are numerable. Mm -hmm. And since they are numerable, you can talk about necessarily, you can talk about number and quantity. Mm -hmm. And in respect to the fact that they are number and quantity on this level, the things that are numerable are all qualities. Mm -hmm. But right. they wouldn't be ideas. distinct and different. Yeah. Right? But yet they can yet still be distinct and different. But they wouldn't be distinct and different if they weren't qualities. That's right. And I just thought I'd make that jump and say you can see the same thing that the second point I was making. Was that the same six are apparent equally in an act of knowing? Yeah. Right? Same knowing. Knowing Knower. presupposes an object. Right. You can't have knowing without an object. Mm -hmm. Right? They're different. And there has to be some activity called knowing. Right? You got the three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Okay. If there's knowing, Quick, you can run through that six? Sure you can. Mm -hmm. There's quality, identity, difference. What would be at rest? Trying to be. Being. Being. Okay. It, according to the style of reasoning, you're willing to go along with what I'm right, or we're willing to go along with this analogy, which leads you to the hypothesis that there is some kind of difference. It, by these analogies, between the intellective principle and being. Well, yeah. in that vision, 
there has to be some kind of dual quality that comes through immediately. Yet, it's, yet in its unity. So it has to be. Right? And now we can say, looking at the problem of knowing and seeing, uh, uh, or the example of fire, light, that once you, once you can make that fundamental distinction, then all of these other things are, which can be derived, can it? Right? From the examples we just said, they'll be derived. Therefore, it presupposes that the original experience should have that quality, that same quality. The original experience? Oh, and it followed that last sentence you said, the original experience should have that same quality, and I don't will follow you on that. If it doesn't have the same quality, then everything that What same. original experience? Well, this thing that we're talking about. Oh. No way to handle this. No way to experience. Call it no way okay. I know. Don't, don't do that. That's a good question. I like to knock things I don't. We charge. Gee, we got a worker here. We should work the hell out of it. Right? <sighs> Okay. Yeah. Getting tired already? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I am when I get home sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, tedious. Yeah. yeah. It's all a training of cats. <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks okay. a lot, mm. Pouring milk and opening cans of food. Mm. Okay. The intelligence. Manifold and divine is in the soul, since the soul is joined to it, provided the soul does not will to overstep its bounds and secede from it. And what? Do that again, please. That is very Do it over. Huh? This guy a southerner? <laughs> right, yeah. A what? A southerner? Sex session. <laughs> Come on, they can't go okay. straight to it. And we cannot <laughs> secede from secede. the world. Y'all. The intelligence, manifold and divine, is in the soul, since the soul is joined to it, provided the soul does not will to overstep its bounds and secede from it. So close to the intelligence that it is almost one with it, the soul is everlastingly vivified. Okay. Low be low? No, let's hear some other translation here. This bond, then, which is over the soul, is multiple, and soul exists among the intelligible realities in close unity with them unless it wills to desert them. When it has come near, then, to him and, in a way, become one with him, it lives forever. God, hey, hey, well, this hey. sounds religious, so, though. Where did you get this one, all right? Hey, you're so different. This oh, yeah. You're so different. It's like a southern brand. <laughs> As a manifold, then, this God, the intellective, intellectual principle, exists above the soul here. The soul which once for all stands linked, a member of this of that the divine, unless by a deliberate apostasy. <laughs> Catholic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is Catholic so translation. This guy. Catholic theology, right? This, this, theology. Yeah, this guy says, says, sounds very non Catholic here, this guy. <laughs> Catholic theology. Yeah. I think of Julian. That's a big book. Right? They're so different, those right. three translations. Isn't it? Yeah. Boy, I, I, I and, really and, like and the And reading this one time. or the other doesn't seem to help. Yeah, the lobe is the best. Oh, the lobe. Yeah. Try Let's the, hear the lobe, lobe again, please. This God, then. This God, then. Which is over the soul, is multiple. And see, see. Mm -hmm. see. Remember the description we had of soul? Last time, he's saying above it, right? Above it is this intellectual principle. Right? Okay, that's an AW. 
Does yes. what possible yeah. perception of the mind would disclose that above soul right, there is this thing? Right? That's something that has to be verified by our AWs, our archetypal watchers, right? But you wouldn't have that problem using O'Brien, would you? Read O'Brien again. The intelligence, manifold and divine, is in the soul. Okay. The above oh. quality is not there. No, it's in it. Right, it's in it. Mm -hmm. So, so that doesn't it differentiate. Right. It, it almost it, it almost puts the soul on an equal par. Yeah, in that sound. Yeah. yeah. Except it's just then it's contained. Right. So. What's the model of soul then? It's above soul. It's Except the model of soul. Yeah, Remember he doesn't the have the above here. Oh, Tuesday we had the. Mm -hmm. World soul he pre presented last time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the same term. I'm sorry, forget Yes. Forget that. Okay. Yeah. Cancel. Cancel. Yeah, this is a problem. Yeah, okay. This is a problem. Oh, can we, I'd like to hear yeah, that again. Could you read that, uh, Nancy? This God then, which is over the soul, is mm -hmm. multiple. And soul exists among the intelligible realities in close unity with them, unless it wills to desert them. Right, so it's got, yeah. he's got the soul as an idea and the, inter and the intellectual will. In mm -hmm. O'Brien, it's one of its existence. Right? Yeah. It's like the soul has contained the intelligence, like in O'Brien. Yeah, although mm -hmm. it doesn't, if you read That's down a little further, right. it's almost one with it. You know, it's like, you know, what is it? But it's it can desert the object. Unlike the intellective principle. It says the intelligence manifold and divine is in the soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in the soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not a higher. See? It doesn't say. Oh, this is yeah, the guy who put the soul in the, soul in the uh, the intelligence in the body. Yeah. <laughs> He's an Aristotelian. <laughs> is that, yeah? It's for the intelligence How does it see? Is. How does it exist? An issue from the one in order to God. see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, all right, you push on? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. What established the intelligence thus? Its source did, the partless that is prior to plurality, that is the cause both of being and of multiplicity, that is the maker of number. Number is not the first. One is prior to two, and two comes after one. Two, indeterminate in itself, is made determinate by one. When plurality becomes determinate, with a determinacy rather like that of substances, That's a it becomes number. The soul is number two, because the primals are not quantitative masses. Masses, the gross in nature, are secondary, for all that sense perception thinks them essences, for all that sense perception thinks them essences. Nobility of seed or plants consists not in perceptible moisture, but in number and seminal re reason, both imperceptible. Should I go on? <clears throat> number and plurality that are in the intelligible realm are reason and intel reasons and intelligence. But in itself, as it were, plurality is indeterminate. The number, however, that comes from it and from the one is form, quite as if all things assumed form in it, assumed form in it. Yeah. The intelligence <coughs> sure is. <coughs> the intelligence is <coughs> intelligence is formed differently by the one than it is formed of itself. That is, like sight made actual. For intellection is the seen as seen. The two are one. Yeah, just for five more lines, but how and what 
does the intellectual principle see? How and what does the intellectual principle see? And especially, how has it sprung from that which is to become the object of its vision? Right? How has it become? Right? How has it sprung from that which is to become the object of its vision? Mm -hmm. The mind demands the existence of these beings, but it is still in trouble over the problem endlessly debated by the most ancient philosophers. From such a unity as we have declared the one to be, how does anything at all come into substantial existence, any multiplicity, dyad or number? Why has the primal, the one, not remain self-gathered so that there so that there be none of this profusion of yeah. manifolds such as we observe in existence and yet are compelled to trace to that absolute unity. Right? He's yeah. Got, right? He's got the question. Yeah. Does that feel, sure. yeah. <laughs> and it's why something than nothing? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back to the file. of AWers, don't we? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Selected, and yeah. trained. Right? Mm -hmm. And I guess they could say to themselves that in section five, they can take a rest. <laughs> well, you guys, what would you say? Right? Well, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boy, they direct us somewhere in this number five, would they not? Yeah. For AWers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where? Uh, well, we did, did once. The beginning, didn't we? With that problem of above and in. Mm. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. What a symbol has to precede any type of multiplicity. Right. Well, I'll see now. I'm sorry. No, what a symbol has to precede multiplicity. Right. Yeah, now how is that going to be our couple? Many ones presuppose one. Mm -hmm. right. So, so there's a one in each multiple, or it wouldn't be multiple if there wasn't one. Yeah. So is it, these guys, these guys make steps that no one, no one ever makes. It's so damn funny, and here you have it, right? I mean, this is in just one paragraph. You have a whole Greek world yeah. right there. <laughs> Number in the right. intelligible world. Right? Look what he does. All he's still got this. This is all he's got. Is nature and function. That's all he has. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all this is. Nature function. Right? So that, hey, what does he got? He's got, it's always functioning. Too, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Nature function. You got two. I got two. Now I got three. Now I got three. There's a relationship. Right. And there's a difference. I got four. Mm-hmm. You got a multiplicity. Like, yeah, okay, what, what's the first thing? They, yeah. they make a clear distinction here, right? Nature Between nature function. and function. Primaries precede secondaries. Huh? Right? Then they have that, don't they? Mm -hmm. Right? That's but right. he also has, hey, this you know, this whole question, the whole question that we're dealing with is, uh, what is the relationship between the one that precedes the many? Yeah. Right? This is one experience, right? And you find a distinction within it. Don't you? Why do we you know? And, and yet we, there is the ne necessary assumption from this that there must be a higher term. The one. 
Hey, you know what? A whole bunch of religious systems fall. They can't make this step. They can't make this step. They take this as the ultimate experience. They can't make this very step. This is where Buddhism is. This is where Chung is. Hmm. What about the Tibetans, the Dharmakaya? See, uh, that's different. Do, that's do a high go, level, isn't it? See that? Well, that I mean, that yeah. that's two. Yeah. But do they? They don't. They don't raise. One no, see, well, it's the next step. It's the next yeah, step. It's how do they get there, isn't it? See, it's the next step, and that's right here. Look. Uh, what is the simplex preceding the multiple? What is the cause at once of its existence and of its existing as a manifold? What is the source of this number, this quantity? See what he just did? He did it. Yeah, See the passage? What is the source? What is the, source? What is the cause of, it, of the existence and of its existing, right? They're going for this. Hey, what's the cause? They go for cause immediately. What is the cause of this being one yet multiple? Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's one hell of a jump. You don't see that anywhere. I mean, you do, but I mean, not, not very often. <laughs> I don't find any right, and it's the next step that's Greek. All right, what's the cause of its existence? And it's existing as a manifold. Well, he's the next step, see? He's made a distinction between... What is the cause of this one and it's being multiple? Hey, he's going, now the next step is one, uh-uh, number, quantity. Now he's going to work out all of the implications as he understands they have a theory of arithmetic. Then they go back from this to here. That's the way they go. This is this. A. This is A. Recollection of that? No. All of these people were either attracted to this before the experience, oh. or they all came to it after you. It's either, they're all ACs. They're not Bs. Right for the AW. Mm -hmm. You mean they have some affinity mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the experience? Is that what you're the, the affinity, though, is in the fact that they love to go to arithmetic and mathematics for their models. Oh. They go to arithmetic, right? Don't they? Again and again, I don't know all these groups. They go, math, they go to math. They go to that as a model. So they have within this now they have make a whole bunch of distinctions. Oh, by the way, they're going to go right back here, aren't they? Right, that's going to be the foundation of their thinking. Then from here they go wide, widespread. But they nearly always go there. He has two others that are favorites of his: seminal plant, husbandry, plant. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the idea of uh, what was it? Just, oh, dancing. <laughs> and the dancer is a favorite. Of his. Also, uh, streams. Streams. Streams, joining mm -hmm. and parting. Right. Yeah. Pardon? Fire. Fire, right. Oh, yes, yeah. sight. The sight's a big one. Right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So that the next paragraph, right, he proceeds into this, in, back into this problem, and that's the problem of the dyad, the two. Just the problem of the dyad. Right? So now he's going to talk about it in terms of this theory of the diet. Oh, this is... All right, so they have these two theories about, it, about dyads and triads and quads and all, all, all kinds of things they have. But they got that in their back pocket. Right. So they're carrying, as it were, a whole Greek culture behind them. Right? That they're familiar with. They've integrated. 
they have one of these experiences, they scratch their head and they begin to do some work. Mm. Other people may thank God, right? Mm -hmm. Offer up a sacrifice, right? right? And that's, that's it. These guys are cooking on it, aren't they? They're, they're, they're cooking with it. They keep going over it, they reflect. That's their metaphysics. Mm. Making rational these states of mind. Mm. It's a psychology. The psychology of the psyche is metaphysics. I need a drink.